this is Ken Pyle. We're here at the Broadband Property Summit, and we are talking to Peggy Rudd. Now, Peggy is the librarian for the state of Texas, and that's really interesting. You're here at a broadband conference, so tell us a little bit about what that means as the librarian of uh, Texas. Right. Well, this is kind of a different conference for me. Usually I'm at library uh, or archival uh, conferences. But I think the reason that it's so important for me to be here is to talk about libraries as anchor institutions because they are specifically called out in the uh, Broadband Technology Opportunities Program grant, uh, NOFA. And so we were very excited that public computer centers, which we've been working with mm -hmm. for probably 15 years now in Texas, building over time with our state resources, local resources, of course, and then with grant money from the federal government under the Library Services and Technology Act, as well as wonderful support from time to time from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, Mr. Gates has taken that on as a cause celeb. So, of course, getting the computers and all of the networking capacity in, into the libraries has been important from our perspective. But now, bandwidth is becoming a big bigger and bigger and bigger challenge for local libraries because there's more and more and more that's being demanded from their communities. Um, it's not just a matter of you know, people sitting to do email, although that's very important mm -hmm. because social connections is one of the main reasons people want to use the internet. But it's also uh, small communities wanting to connect local health care providers with doctors that are not located in their communities. It's uh, online databases full of information, but frequently has photographs, uh, schematics of one kind or another, things that really eat up bandwidth uh, when they're transferred from one place to another. Students doing homework and believe me, homework's a lot different now than it mm. was for me. Yeah. Years. It's, it's a lot harder for me, in my experience. <laughs> right, my exactly. Side. I'm not smarter than a fourth grader <laughs> or fifth grader, whatever, uh, than, uh, than I uh, uh, was at one point. But I think kids are really uh, demanding so much more uh, from their libraries because so much more is being demanded of them. And one of the things that libraries are key in is uh, in uh, information literacy, helping students particularly, but anybody, determine what's good on the internet and what is suspicious. What mm -hmm. should you, what kind of criteria should you apply to the things that you locate on the internet to determine whether they are truthful, whether they are reliable, whether they've been vetted uh, by, uh, by experts. So, um, but bandwidth is where we've really been doing a lot of work in, in Texas. And I'm going to actually talk about that um, because we've applied for a BTOP grant okay. uh, on behalf of 38 of our libraries serving about 33% of the population of Texas. And uh, so we're excited about the future. Well, yeah, and one of the things, um, you know, you would think that the Internet would kind of disintermediate libraries, but there is a certain, you know, people still, there's that eye to eye, or, I mean we see it at this conference, so I, I suppose there's going to be an ongoing value there in helping people who otherwise wouldn't have computers. Absolutely. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, I was talking with Linda Reese, who's one of our librarians out in uh, a little town in West Texas called Big Lake. Uh, and there is a big lake there, although the town is very, very small. <laughs> and she was telling me about a gentleman who came into the library waving a piece of paper, and it was from the Workforce Commission in Texas. And, and he, it was telling him for his unemployment benefits to go to this particular URL and fill out a form. He didn't know what a URL was. He said, could you please help me? I don't know what this means. I don't know what this is. And of course, our librarians, being the wonderfully helpful people they are, said, let me show you. Let me show you. And not only that, but let me walk you through this form. Because you'll want to do this. You'll need to do this in the future to update things. And so let me show you this first time so that later you're empowered to do it yourself. So that's just one of many, many examples I could cite. 
And it sounds like there's a huge, huge opportunity for you uh, in terms of taking the paper and making it digital. Uh, you have archives going back to the 1600s. Right, we do. And actually, on our website at the Texas State Library and Archives Commission, we've got a lot of digitized images. But as I always point out to legislators in my state, uh, it's not just like slapping something on a photocopy machine and saying, oh, well, hmm. Yeah. That's done. You have to be able to find it later. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's really the part of it, creating the metadata that enables you to locate specific pieces of information that you want later on. That's what takes time and money and people. But ultimately, it'll pay off because you'll have more efficient uh, transfer of information. But you need the bandwidth. Right. And it's all about access. It's all about access. If you want to have, uh, right now we're digitizing uh, a whole set of uh, Civilian Conservation Corps maps that were done of the Texas State Parks way back in the 1930s. And those things are not going to cross the internet um, very quickly if you don't have robust bandwidth. That makes sense. Well, Peggy, thank you very much for your time. Oh, Good luck with welcome, the panel. Ken. Thank you so much.